Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Bill Strain, and I'm a Director of Security Services at IOMAR. Um, what I'd like to do today is uh, obviously introduce IOMAR to you, if you don't know us already, but also talk a little about um, why cybersecurity is uh, basically a board-level issue now, and also go into you know what you need to put in place to protect yourself from cyber attacks and what you need to do um, for a, a basically a worst case scenario. So if I just, just kick off and um, tell you a little about IOMART. Um, IOMART's been in business now for over 20 years. Um, we're currently at probably around 400 uh, staff the majority of which are technical. Um, we have over we have thirteen data centres around the UK, and you know we own the data centres from the ground up. These data centres are connected with um, you know uh, fibre, um, so you know connectivity is a, a big part of, of our business or a big part of the services that we can deliver. And we've got points of presence uh, around the world. Um, so, you know, um, in terms of our business, it's primarily been around delivering infrastructure services, um, private clouds, public clouds, um, basically from one end to the other. Um, another big part of our business is data protection. That's around backup uh, and DR services. I've mentioned already connectivity. Obviously, we have got our, um, our our fiber ring around the country, but we can also basically take the connectivity out to um, you know on premise uh, and you know pull the pull the data in from there, provide those services as well. Another part of our business is our consultancy practice. Um, you know, we provide consultancy on all parts of uh, all the services that, that we deliver. And the last one I haven't mentioned, which is a big part of what we do, is security, and that's obviously the the, the subject of uh, of the presentation at the moment. If we if we start off, um, the, the sort of premise is that basically cyber security is now a board level issue, whereas um, frankly, for most of you know my professional career, it's been viewed as a, a technical issue, you know, something that the you know the techies will fix. We've got antivirus. We've got some firewall. You know, the firewall rules are set up properly. You know, so we, we've got nothing much to worry about. The IT guys are on top of it, and it, it's increasingly clear that that's just not the case anymore. And um, the world has moved on. Um, the days of um, you know script kiddies who are basically you know downloading scripts from the internet, running these scripts in order to annoy. Uh, people or, you know, perhaps impress their friends uh, have now uh, passed. Um, basically, cyber attacks today are, you know, it's 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 a business. Um, the guys are doing this aren't, you know, sitting in their bedroom downloading scripts anymore. I mean, they're literally going home from, from work in Ferraris. This is now, you know, it's an organised business. It, it's organised crime and uh, it's it's very profitable uh, organized crime as well um if we you know if, if we look at the the type of businesses that are being hit now um you know it, it's it's right it's literally right across the board um those are a, a few headlines um you know the, the the state of affairs now is that you can basically go on and there are literally sites that just give you daily updates of who's been hit now, who's paid what, what has happened. You know, it's it's uh, you know, it's basically a huge industry. And no one is literally no business is safe. And you know, in, in my view, this should be treated very much like any other business process or you know, um, it, it needs to be prioritised, or the businesses that don't prioritise it basically won't be here. Um, you know, we've all been used to, you know, basically, you know, Trojans and things like this, and you know, you're going to an antivirus is going to pick things up. Uh, you know, perhaps it'll pick it up, or it'll pick it up, at, you know, at some point when it updates its patterns file, 
and you know that that might be the you know that will maybe do a little damage, but nothing too terrible. That's just not the way the world works now. Um, basically, you know, your cyber attacks are a lot more complex in that the roots into your business are what they're focusing in on, but. What they're not doing is trying to annoy you. What they will do is they will get into your business and they will sit quietly and they will basically learn how your infrastructure works. And once they know as much about your infrastructure as probably your IT department does, they will pick a day where um, you know they're going to send you the bill. So, for example, they won't be running you know some piece of scripted software they'll probably write their own script. And for example, this script, the first, let's say it's a, it's one o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, the first thing they might do is just go in and delete your backups. So make sure all your backups are gone. Then they'll just start encrypting all your files. And then the last thing they're going to do is send you an email um, basically demanding, you know, X number of dollars in Bitcoins be deposited in an account somewhere. And uh, you you will now be in a world of pain, and um, this is not, as I say, any in any way exceptional. Um, if you you know go onto the websites, you'll see businesses and organisations have been hit every day with this. So this is another one of our, our new normals. Um, so here's obviously um, I'm talking about our security service but here's an example of uh, here are some of the you know the threats that that you're facing this is by no means an exhaustive list and some of these are just merely roots into your organization some of them are exploits in themselves but there is a, a whole world of um of threats that you you have to you as an organization have to look out for some parts of it you're looking for people who are trying to get into your organization but other parts of it you're actually looking to see you're looking for activity that indicates that you've been compromised in some fashion or that even you know members of staff are um behaving in 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 manners that they, that they should not so it's a, a big, complicated picture, and um, it's it's an issue for most IT departments now to to get their head around. Um, it, it's not the one of the problems is, as I say, these people are professionals, uh, so they don't work nine till five. They're not going to knock off on a Friday and come back on the Monday. Um, they're going to attack you at any time of the day or night. So whatever protections you've got in place um, basically have to be uh, 24-7. Uh, to, obviously, to add to the pain, um, we've now got the, the issue with um, basically the, the breadth of uh, the surface area that they can attack. Um, obviously, we've... Um, Traditionally, what would happen is the perimeter would be protected, and that was considered to be good enough. Of course, now, um, you know, with the current situation and just the way the world has been going, the the perimeter has has basically been, you know, has has dissolved. So now we're going, you know, a normal organisation's infrastructure now stretches all the way from mobile devices through to perhaps, you know, on-premise systems through to hosted systems all the way out to the hypercloud, Azure, you know, Google AWS, and, and uh, basically SaaS services. So all of those complications. And then we've also got the world of remote workers where, you know, now your corporate network's basically sitting on someone's Wi-Fi at home. And, you know, you're, you're applying, you have to apply the same set of controls to that uh, as you would within the corporate network. So it's a, it's a very big and a very complicated uh, area and you can't just focus on one corner. You've basically got to um, you know, be present everywhere and you've not just got to be present in terms of defence, you've also got to be present in terms of um, actually making assumptions that in one way, shape or form that you, you will be breached and, uh, you know, 
taking whatever appropriate action uh, needs to be taken at that point. So that's the sort of breadth of, uh, of the problem. Um, if we look at the, the type of thing that um, services that you might put in place uh, to, to protect you, um, again, this is very far from uh, an exhaustive list, but if you look at the type of cyber attacks, for example, DDoS is probably, if you're online, a thing that you need to think of, think about. Um, you know, it's fairly crude. It's usually vol volumetric attacks, but basically they're just going to try and take your website offline or some of your services offline and, um, you know, again, pay them the money and they'll, they, they may stop. Um, in terms of, you know, application defences, again, where, you know, the online services, more, you know, most businesses are now, you know, most of your, a lot of your interactions are via applications in one form or another, uh, out facing the internet. Um, these, as I'm going to, you know, the vulnerabilities are constantly appearing in, in these applications and in these application stacks. And so, you know, whereas you were perfectly secure um, yesterday, today, you may have an issue. There may be an exploit that you 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 know nothing about, and and through they come. Um, similarly, in, intrusion detection and prevention. Obviously, intrusion prevention. That's you know that that's the ideal scenario. But you have to again put your put your systems and processes in place with the the, the assumption that. Um, you know, you, you can't keep people out forever. If they get in from one of the, you know, many routes, um, you can detect some, you know, abnormal traffic and, and take take whatever action. Again, abnormal access uh, is a similar uh, similar situation where, for example, some of your, um, it may be an account that's compromised or something like that. So you're looking out for a strange behavior uh, out, of, out of the ordinary. Malware and ransomware protection, that's obvious. Um, you know, that, that's, uh, um, you know, every organization should have that. But again, you have to make sure it's up to date at every single endpoint or, you know, every system that's vulnerable. A key thing here as well that needs to be, um, you know, needs to come right to the fore is vulnerability scanning. Um, as I've said, you can build the defences, but it's a constantly evolving situation. And vulnerabilities may appear in your organisation overnight. And if you cannot deal with these uh, vulnerabilities, now these vulnerabilities may be, for example, you have to patch some software, but that may not be possible because, you know, for versioning reasons, if you move to the latest version, some piece of software will no longer work in which case you've got to put mitigation uh, around this. It's a complicated situation, but vulnerability scanning is, is absolutely key today. Another area that's, uh, that's uh, coming to the fore is uh, AI. Um, so basically systems that just basically learn what's normal in your organization and attempt to flag up what they perceive as, uh, as anomalous um, behavior. Again, pretty key uh, going forward and, uh, you know, again, it's something we've seen uh, a bit of success with. And another huge area is just basically data loss protection, you know, with, uh, you know, you need to know if your if critical information has been touched. That may be by, you know, um, you know cyber criminals, but equally it could be um, inappropriate access from trusted individuals. Um, so those are some of the services that you should have in place, but as I say, it, it's it's not exhaustive. Obviously, I'm, I'm talking to some degree about our money service and uh, you know what what needs to happen, but there's there's kind of three pieces that need to be in place just for monitoring your, your cybersecurity. First of all, um, the platforms have to be built properly they have to be you know built with security in mind from the start um obviously we you know we deliver um that as part of our consultancy service and you know, and, and that's basically uh, the type of systems that, that we deliver 
Um, and that goes all the way from on-premise through all the way through to, to the hypercloud. But just building the systems properly in the first place is nowhere near good enough because um, they have to be kept constantly up to date and they have to be uh, constantly monitored because the threat is just evolving all the time. So you need to be basically be monitoring um, you know, all security events 24-7 uh, and you need to be making sure that as a, as a new threat evolves, your infrastructure is checked to make sure you're not exposed to it. You're not exposed to any new vulnerabilities. But even that in itself isn't isn't enough because um, the you know when you actually discover that you know you have been threatened or you have been breached, the the key point is that you need to be able to take action. As I say, uh, the cyber criminals don't work nine till five. They will be attacking you at the moment that they think is the most inconvenient for you. And what you need is security professionals basically on hand, monitoring your infrastructure 24 seven. But when something does happen, it's about the reaction. And for example, you know, in the case of IOMART, we not only have the security professionals, but we have the infrastructure professionals who actually understand the infrastructure and can take whatever you know mitigation uh, is required. So that could be patching, or for example, it could be new firewall rules, or it could be you know whatever is required. Um, quite often with security services, all that happens is they'll identify a problem and just throw over the, the fence to you. And, and one of the other problems is basically, do you have the resources to react if you've got a major problem that involves um, a lot of infrastructure work? You know, what's what's the timeframes for getting that done? So that's uh, that, that's that, that's the case for managed security, and that, that that's why basically. Um, you basically need to have this in place. You need to have, you know, the services at least that I've, I've shown you, and you need to have twenty four seven monitoring, whether that's your staff or, as I say, uh, a managed service. However, um, as I said, uh, the, this um, this is not perfect. Putting these services in place does not guarantee you're safe. It's kind of like a burglar alarm. Um, it may deter some people, and they may just move on to your neighbour. Um, but if they are determined, then there is a you know there is the strong possibility that they could get through, and that is something that you really need to you need to think about. Looking at the examples on the screen here, these are all security companies that have services in place and have been breached themselves. So it's it's not a case of you know, as long as we are, you know, we're doing, you know, we've got best practice in place, we're safe. Um, hopefully you are, and obviously it is the absolutely the thing to do, but you are not guaranteed that you, the, the same sort of horrific circumstances can happen to you. And particularly if you're in a, a vulnerable industry, you know, this can uh, genuinely be catastrophic. So if we assume that the, the worst has happened, and if you imagine you've come in one morning, your uh, all your uh, storage has been encrypted, your backups have been deleted. You know what what is it that you're going to do? What are you know what actions are you going to take? Well, there's a bunch of things that you really need to know before you you can move on. Um, first one, dead obvious, is how did they get in? And even then, on top of that, you know. When were we breached? Have they just come in or have they been in for weeks? Um, what systems did they have access to? Have they just pulled up all our all your customer data? Um, or is it, you know, is it is it more limited? You know, what systems have been brought down? Are these the only ones that have compromised, or have they just not got round to the rest of them yet? Do we have backups of the systems that have gone? And then the next one, have the are these backups, have they been compromised? Um, you know, are we just restoring the problem back, you know, back onto, you know, uh, the, our current infrastructure and away around we go again? And then another really obvious one is, who do we tell about this? And, you know, what do we say? You know, now this is really is in the realms of, you know, business. Do you, do you tell customers? Do you, you know, do you try and fix the situation? 
uh, before you, you go and tell people. And there, there's numerous uh, disaster stories of just even, you know, companies having this nightmare and then making it worse by um, uh, terrible communication. What do we do to um, recover from this situation? Well, th the sad thing is what most people do is you're going to pay the ransom because if you are in that situation, you're dealing with a business, um, probably 90-odd percent of the time you'll get some data back if you pay the, the ransom. Um, you Do you have GDPR and PCI issues that you've got to, you've got to deal with? Um, you know, can you find any valid backups? Um, you know, what systems, you know, what do you need to do to rebuild the systems that have been taken out? Do you have the configurations? You know, what, what can be rebuilt? What do you need to rebuild? What's the minimum you need to get up to, to do, you know, to, to cope with uh, or to deal with customers and get business going again? And how, how do you communicate? Whose job is it to, to talk to the, you know, talk internally and externally? Um, so how do you protect your organization? Well, first of all, you have to prioritize security. And that means making sure that the appropriate services are either protecting or monitoring all aspects of your infrastructure. Next, you need to invest in 24 seven security monitoring. Um, you may be able to do this with um, your existing staff, or you may find that you have to invest in a managed security service to provide this level of cover. Crucially, you also have to plan for a breach. And this means identifying the key systems and data that your business requires in order to keep functioning. You need to make sure that you've got an up-to-date copy of all the critical data stored offline, and that includes the data and configuration files for any services that are required. You need to make sure that you can test all the data to ensure that it's not been compromised. You don't want to um, basically restore compromised data and find that um, you've just reintroduced the problem back into your system. You also need to ensure that you have as part of the offsite backups, you have um, got the log files and metrics that you require in order to understand how the breach has occurred. And lastly, you need to have a communication plan. You need to understand what you will say and who will be saying it. So to summarize, any good business needs to put the key resources in place to succeed. You need to plan to grow and thrive in the good times, but also plan how to survive when things get tough. So robust security and planning will allow you to grow your business with confidence and ensure that you can survive the tough times. So that's it from me. Um, thank you for listening to the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please join us at our booth where uh, one of my colleagues or myself would be very happy to talk to you. Thank you.